Yeah, we're good now? Yeah. Uh, we were discussing in the speaker's lounge, and I read so many books and watch so many shows that I will have a complaint or two about every adaptation. So I think I don't need to give any introduction to the subject. I think all of us are uh, voracious consumers of whatever is being put out there. So we'll start, uh, we'll start straight, jump into the topic. And uh, please keep your questions ready. In, in between, we, we'll be very happy to take questions if the audience has any. Um, first of all, you know, when you look at source material uh, from the point of view of taking a story on the big screen, what are the usual places that you look at? And is, is adapting something from a series or a book, is that one of the biggest sources? Or is it one of the things that come across your uh, plate? Uh, I'd like to start with Priya and uh, Siddharth first and then move on to Vanijay for, for specific reasons. Priya? Priya is applause, so they've done, they've done a lot of adaptations, so that's why I wanted to give your Dhobi list, so to say. Hi. I think you need to press the power button. Hello? Yeah. Hi. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, yes, at applause, so we've, uh, out of, say, 42 shows that we've done, we, um, that, we ha that are released yet, we have about 17 that are adapted, which are reimaginations, official adaptations of uh, formats, okay. of formats. And um, an equal amount, uh, interestingly, is originals, uh, which are original uh, stories that producers, writers, directors have come to us with, or we've developed them and there are about eight or so which are book adaptations uh, what we look for when we sort of begin or how we really start this process of course i mean if one speaks about really adaptations which of existing shows the first thing that we do is obviously i mean watch the show because it's got to be able to travel well it's got to you know like uh, it's got to have a context that you can set it in india it has to become global has to have the potential to become local uh, you need to, I mean, apart from emotion, of course, it's got to have universal emotion that travels, it's got to have definitely plot that can move uh, sort of boundaries, because you want to stay true to the plot. You don't want to move stories, you don't want to change the story. The moment you identify that, you're getting into, okay, so we're not going to straight up adapt, we're going to sort of reimagine it for an Indian context. So we have a show on Sony Live called Your Honor, which is adapted from an Israeli show of the same name. Uh, this, uh, you know, the moment we watched it and we realized that we, you know, we'd like to have this travel into an Indian context, the first thing to discuss was where do we set this? You know, how do we contextualize this to India? Because Indians want to watch Indian stories set in Indian places uh, and a story that really speaks to the Indian uh, viewership. So we took it to Punjab and then if you watch it, the language, the lingo, the ethos, the culture, Everything sort of stems from the moment you imagine where you're going to set this. So we like to call this, you know, not so much an adaptation, but a constant reimagination of the source material, whether it is a book or it is a, um, I mean, uh, books usually, if they're Indian books, then they're already set in a certain way in the Indian context. But if you take a show that is somewhere else, you get to immediately start imagining it in a certain place, hence reimagination, not really a remake or an adaptation of it. And then, of course, we add like a myriad of things that, uh, because a good story should be retold everywhere. It uh, has the potential. If it has the potential, it should be retold in many parts. The world is really, I mean, it's flattening out with the streaming platforms. Everybody is, you know, pretty much consuming everything. So people are interested in good stories. They want to watch the Indian actors, Indian storytellers, Indian uh, context, you know, or Tom Cruise is in, uh, you know, he's doing what he's doing, we don't need the Pathan. But it's happening because people are watching, they want to consume the Indian uh, creators and the, they want inside jokes, they want inside culture, you know. So that, that really actually constant, uh, a constant motivation for writers, directors and of course all of us producers is to be able to imagine it in the context that an Indian viewership will be able to, it'll be palatable to them. So you don't want to change out your plot the first thing you want to do is look at a plot and say whether this can play out. Can this be imagined in India? And then we add a lot of things like you won't have family in the same way as India has family in a show. So you'll need to add like a show we have called Hostages. You know, it's a family taken hostage. Uh, so when we imagined it in Delhi, 
it was tough to imagine how a family of this scale or a house of this scale wouldn't have help, you know, and how can the owners be taken hostage. So we had to introduce a track where the help had taken leave and, you know, sort of moved on. Similarly, for criminal justice in season one, the family of Vikrant Masi is not so much a part of the original. We added that because India has, you know, family. You're, you're not living in uh, silos. So you have to, then you keep on, you know, you add those nuances, you add those uh, sort of cultural takes, and you make it uh, relatable, which is the reimagination for the Indian viewer. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if it's a good story, it yeah. should be retold everywhere. Siddharth, uh, from a BBC perspective, because you sit on a lot of formats globally, so is, is, is one of the reasons, I suppose, is you're fast off the mark developmental process doesn't take long, or does it with adaptations? How does uh, it work? Relatively, uh, when you're adapting a format, mm -hmm. uh, it's a little simpler, mm -hmm. uh, because you have the source material, right? You have the, the original Bible, to say, uh, sort of already in place. Uh, so yes, it does cut down the time of development, but uh, I would say that nothing is ever that short when it comes to writing. So even if it is uh, an existing source material, the development period will still be almost a year, while on an original, it might even extend that, right? Because uh, it's not just simply translating the original scripts, it's a lot of localizing. Uh, and just as an example, uh, Priya also said a few things, but on criminal justice, which is a legal show, our legal system doesn't match other countries. Uh, uh, and especially with the UK system or the US system, if you're adapting one of those, the jury systems don't match. Our complete uh, legal system has to be stripped down for, for an adaptation, and we have to go into a proper research. So we spent on each season of the show almost a year in research with uh, cops and with lawyers to figure out how this case would play out mm -hmm. for us. Uh, and yeah, so that also does take a lot of time, but yes, relatively much lesser time because you have the blueprint. Is, is popularity a factor? Should it be a factor when you choose? Because some source material may be popular in Europe, let's say, or in Britain. Uh, and Rinalini, Vaibhava, I, I want you guys to step. Should that be a filter? What should the filters be when we look at adaptations? Hi, everyone. Uh, so just for a little context, um, we at Banerjee Asia also have a very healthy slate divided across originals and adaptations, uh, you know, which we look at both with a lot of interest. To answer your question, Vanita, I'll give you an example from our slate. We adapted a very small show for the Tamil market, for Hotsta Tamil, which was called Vertige. It was a very small show which originated in French Canada, very much based on the lines of Total Recall. Nobody knew about it. Uh, you know, it was not very popular. But the beauty of that format was that it was a contained format. It had only four locations and very few cast members, right? So the efficiency of that format was very strong, and the story was phenomenal. And we just released that in the Tamil market as The Fall, and it's doing phenomenally well. So I would say our first filter would be story. Okay. The second filter would be popularity, because what happens a lot of times is that, uh, like we just did the night manager for Hotstar, we're just doing the good wife uh, for Hotstar with Kajol. Sometimes what happens is when you bring a legacy format, there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of sort of uh, anticipation around it. Who's going to play this character? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? But the fact of the matter is that anticipation is only in our industry. The audience doesn't know that it's an adaptation or a foreign show. Absolutely. For the audience, you know, they're not coming in to watch Night Manager because it's a John Le Carre adaptation or because you already played uh, a character in it. They are coming to see, oh my God, what is the story? Are is me Anil Kapoor bhi hai? Are is me Aditya Roy Kapoor bhi hai? So I think. The pr this is just an industry thing that we are selecting certain stories from the international markets, be it Turkish, be it Spanish, be it uh, Western. But primarily for your audience, what you need to keep, uh, uh, you know, sacrosanct is that can this story originate in my backyard? You know, when you watch a crime thriller, does a cop somewhere in India say, ye to mere jail mein hua tha? You know, or does somebody, when you do a legal show, does some lawyer say, yes, this is inspired of the Indian legal system? Right? So I think formats need to feel very holistic, very Indian first, and then anything else. Weber, you want to weigh in? And Shailesh, I'm going to get you in from your bird's eye view there. Yeah. So actually, what Manali just said had some very crystallized uh, pointers on not just how to choose, but also how to adapt. 
right? I want to talk about a slightly different process. As a writer producer, what I look at uh, that should be adapted yeah. is something which is an outcome of 100 very brave creators mm -hmm. uh, experimenting, 99 failing, and one succeeding in three territories. Yeah. In itself is like a series of uh, evolutionary uh, processes and I'm taking the most crystallized, most crystalline outcome of it and then saying, India is a very heterogeneous country. I have a, a world within a world. So should this be now brought into my world? That now brings me to another point, which is world building, which is a word we keep, phrase we keep throwing in the, in the business all the time. But then, once you understand what your world is and what world you're bringing in, I say a example, like I say, my world is what? Our world is Tagore, Khusro, you know, uh, Ramdhari Singh Dinkar, uh, you know, uh, Tijan Bhai Pandwani, uh, Kantara, right? Now, with this world, ke saath, do I find congruence in something that somebody has experimented bravely created new relationships, created new conflicts that will resonate with me, okay. is how I look at it. The other thing is, they say about stories that a story needs to speak to your dreams and desires, yet remind you of your reality. That I think is, is so true for everything we do in the series and the movie business as well. You know, So essentially what is happening is, we are looking at stories not just from a popularity point of view, but from a point of view of something that will resonate very well with our uh, audience, but probably hasn't been tried. I will not go to uh, another territory and pick up a story which is like a business as usual story for somebody else, mm -hmm. you know? And if you see with, like Priya correctly said, that OTT has flattened the world uh, in terms of its contours of, you know, uh, preferences, etc. This is the time when you can actually pick up the most unique of the stories and experiment with blending them with different cultures. Yeah, but you know, that throws up the question which I will address, ask after. But you know, if I could watch Fauda in the original, because I can today, what is it that gets me to Fauda in Hindi or Tamil or whatever the context is? But Sh Shailesh, uh, first I want you to, you know, Shailesh Ormac sits on data on context, content from the script testing stage. So his perspective is what I want him to bring here on what he sees as far as consumption patterns and other things on uh, adaptations. Yeah, so I think audiences definitely most of the time are uh, not aware of source material unless it's from India. I think there's a clear distinction between yeah. Indian source material and uh, foreign source material. Uh, if something like Scam 1992, they would have heard of Harshad Mehta and there is definitely a popularity angle there because you would want to know more about the story. That's largely true for biopics and true event-based stories, especially when they have been in the news in the recent past. But if you look at foreign shows, most of the time it's a non-factor. I think that uh, when we're testing adaptations, whether at a script stage or at a episode stage, most of the time we treat, I mean, almost all the time we treat it like any other show. Um, Having said that, uh, you know, the idea besides the uh, speed to market increasing sh is generally that the success rate is proven and therefore you're more likely to succeed within that adaptation because it's done well elsewhere. And I think there, m our experience has been that it's really been uh, some, mo in streaming it's much better than theatrical where a lot of adaptations and remakes have actually not done well in the last, I would say, a decade or so, uh, including Shehzada, which released last couple of weeks ago. Uh, in streaming, it's much better. But then there have been shows like, say, Mind the Malotras or The Office, which have not been able to achieve that level of success in India, probably because culturally the context is n the world has not probably become Indian enough. So I feel it's generally been good. But from an audience point of view, they want to see it as an Indian story. And um, um, most of the time, it is uh, something that sh uh, is happening well, but if you look at the uh, theatrical market, I think that's where you could sense that when you're adapting from Tamil Telugu, which ironically are closer to home than foreign shows, 
the idea of adapting is more like a box office idea rather than a storytelling idea, and, and it is backfiring a lot of times. Yeah. In fact, there the comparisons are more real, like when a film like Shahzada, when most people have been exposed to the original film via YouTube, via streaming platforms, uh, the comparisons can actually backfire at times because you would have a reference and you would compare Alu Arjun to Kartik Aryan, which is, uh, you know, uh, yeah. So, so I think that's happening less in streaming purely because uh, like it's not like a really, really big show like Game of Thrones has been adapted. Uh, so um, most of the shows that have been adapted, even including Fada, are not at that level that they would have Marvel kind of viewership or... Game of Thrones kind of viewership, so... So, so yeah. dubbed subtitle versus adapted, totally scripted and adapted in India. How does that work? I mean, is that a variable when you make a decision that let this run in the dubbed version, it's not... You know, because how much in terms of uh, traction can it get for the platform? I'm uh, assuming that the platform is commissioning if you are developing on your own. Whichever way, how do you make that judgment, that assessment, and this is for both of you. Priya, you want to take it first? Because I mentioned for the... Hello? Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, for something like, since you took the example of Pauda and Tanav, uh, yes, there are people who've seen it, but we do, like we were discussing earlier, we do tend to forget this is a really big country. You know, we're uh, a large globe, local market hoping to be global market. Uh, there's a lot of people who have, the people who've seen are really a very, very tiny percentage, uh, considering the number of people you're reaching with an Indian adaptation. Also, I mean, taking the same example, the original Fauda is set across a political conflict between Israel and Palestine. When we adapted it for India as Tanav, the, we took the conflict into India, in Kashmir, and it was an ideological difference between the characters. Audience wants to watch that, even if you know they're uh, e even if they are aware that this is an adaptation of an ex of an original show, mm -hmm. even if it's a popular show, they want to watch how this story is being told in India, mm -hmm. what is being told in India. So the choices, like you asked, what, you know, on what basis do we make a choice of what works and why one would adapt it? Like Minali rightly said, some of these are of course choices based on it's a you know, legacy show, it's an interesting show, it brings in a great character. It's a character everybody's seen and they want to see India play the same character differently for themselves, you know, speaking like them, living their lives. We're, we've always got this inside view into the characters, right? Uh, apart from popularity, of course, there are those hidden gem shows which are really, which is what we're doing. We're doing that all the time. We are watching so much and as creators, we are watching more because you're always looking for that one show or those shows which are great stories and absolutely relatable emotion because emotion travels. You know, you're going to look for a redemption story, you're going to look for a rags to riches story, you're, you know, Harshad Mehta. You know, by that logic, frankly, Vishal Bhardwaj has made a lot of Shakespeare. But India has watched it, you know, and uh, Harshad Mehta is a character that exists. So you could call it an adaptation of a real story even if there wasn't a book. There is a book, of course. But in the doing of that, India wants to watch. I mean, not India, the, the audience, the viewers want to watch how you're telling a story and what those actors are doing. You relate to, you know, when you say subtitled version, you're still, your eyes are really literally split between two parts of the screen, right? You're reading and then you're watching. So you have a split second difference between what you grasped, uh, which doesn't happen when it's language, which is why we dub in so many Indian languages with every platform because you really get to see a lot of dubbed, uh, you know, uh, material, uh, which is not contesting the source material. It's only enhancing. It's telling it in a different context. So I, I think that's really the choices that you make. It's not so much about a subtitled show. They're not the same. They're Rani, you wanted to say something there. And uh, after Mrinali, if people have questions, please, because we are on the last five and a half minutes. So uh, I agree with Priya, you know, uh, Vanita, subtitling and dubbing is all semantics. Mm. Now I'll tell you from a very simple example, when we picked up the rights to Good Wife, right? CBS and internationally, Good Wife is a legal drama, mm. right? But what is the story for us? It's about a woman who was cheated on by her husband mm. with no job, left to fend for herself and her kids, mm. and how she bounces back in life. 
Now to me, that story told in Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, it doesn't matter. Yeah, totally. It is the story of this woman and that is how we perceived it, mm. right? And very similarly, we recently also picked up the rights to the show called The Monk. I don't know if many people remember it, but it used to feature Tony Shalhoub back in 2008. Monk is a detective story who has an OCD. For us, we recognize him as Karam Chand, you know, or CID. <laughs> so now this entire pool of subtitling dubbing ceases to exist. You know, I pick up Monk, which has 150 beautiful cases, and we adapt them to the Indian subcontext. So if the story is relatable, if it's emotional, if the people feel that this is a conversation we can have in our living room, whether I've picked it up from an international, you know, from an Israeli catalog or a German catalog or a Spanish catalog, the source material has done its job, you know? The, the, like I said, this is a very industry thing. We pick up formats because it sort of uh, lends a little bit of speed to the market, right? But it is all about identifying that right story, which we feel will appeal to the Indian emotion. Got it. Uh, Weber wants to add, is there a question? Okay. Weber wants to add something and then please feel free. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, add one uh, rather amusing example uh, to this discussion. So Simpsons uh, was such a hit in the Arabic world that they decided to make this show called Al Shamsoon. And imagine where it all kind of fell apart. What they couldn't bring to the country was the food choices of the family. And the show, yeah, you can I mean, I don't want to spell it out right now. Okay, so the constantly beer guzzling, you know, pork chops <laughs> chomping uh, uh, Homer Simpson can be called Omar uh, Shamsoon, but he's not the same, you know, guy you want to love but hate and stuff like that. And also, as a culture, the Arabic culture doesn't really encourage, uh, you know, deprecating uh, humor for a protagonist. So eventually, despite having made a remake, they went back to the Arabic subtitle Simpsons for many uh, many seasons to come following that. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. yeah, please. Yeah, uh, while I'm Question. listening to your conversation, I, I just have realized that there is a, uh, I mean, I, uh, I have a doubt uh, uh, in the perspective of audience, ki, uh, audience thinks ki, uh, now we call the term Vasudeva Kutumbakam. So uh, instead of adoption, uh, people see ki agar content mein character mujhe pasand aa raha hai, bolne wala mujhe acha lag raha hai, voice over bahut acha ho gaya hai, wahan ke location mujhe pasand aa raha hai. To, मैं खुश हूँ उस कंटेंट में इंडियन फॉर्मेट में उसे चेंज करने की जरूरत नहीं है फॉरेस्ट गंप उसका बेस्ट एग्जांपल हो सकता है या आने वाली और बहुत सारे कंटेंट हो सकते हैं तो आपको नहीं लगता है कि आने वाले समय में ये और डेंजर हो सकता है कि आप क्रिएटिव कंटेंट को इंडियन फॉर्मेट में चेंज कर रहे हैं बल्कि इंडियन ऑडियंस तो उसको एक्सेप्ट करने लगी है ये मेरा एक सवाल है क्योंकि के लोग पसंद करते हैं वो साउथ की है या नॉर्थ की है अब मैटर नहीं करता है लेकिन 20 साल पहले मैटर करता था बिकॉज उस कैरेक्टर को हमारी ऑडियंस नहीं जानते थे मेरा ये कहना है कि आने वाले टाइम में दैट्स अ वेरी रेलिवेंट क्वेश्चन इन टू डेज टाइम्स बिकॉज वन ऑफ द थिंग्स विच इज एपन इन द लास्ट थ्री ईयर्स बिकॉज ऑफ द पैंडमिक एंड द राइज ऑफ दी दैट uh, the whole idea of dubbing and lip sync has become completely irrelevant. I think audiences are not look worrying about whether it's in the original language or not. His point is, uh, having said that, I think this varies by genre. So certain genres like action, horror, what he's saying is actually true because when you see a Marvel film, you are you don't want to see the any, creature films, the spectacle. Yeah, because there is a certain technology scale budgets that come with that. But when it comes to more emotional, intimate genres like family dramas, romance, the cultural context is far stronger. A love story from America or UK for that matter uh, versus a love story in India would play differently because the idea of love itself is very different. So I think uh, it. Um, makes a lot of sense to uh, rely on the original when the genre is more universal and not emotion driven and uh, context driven but for many stories that would not be the case and that's where this would be uh, you know hi uh, my name is taranjit uh, my specialization comes from post production so i have a question related to that uh, basically ai there is a software called flawless today uh, it's something where I think uh, dubbing is going to go out of fashion because flawless actually matches your lip 
to any language that you want. So now, uh, my question is basically to Brindalini, Priya, and Shailesh. Now, when we talk about adaptations, if I'm able to write, right now we are all writing the dialogues in Hindi or in any Indian language to kind of match the lips of okay, English. We got the question, but we are not, we are not discussing subtitling, in, but I think let No, I'm not answer. saying subtitling, but, but will that not change our whole spectrum of, do we really need to shoot in Indian languages or we could just use flawless and maybe just get the content here? That would look a little more original than we are trying to adapt it. You guys want to take this? And I think time's up, so after this question, we'll have to wrap it up. I feel like even if uh, we do that, uh, an American speaking Hindi very flawlessly and uh, essentially <laughs> contextualizing it that way might still feel weird, right? <laughs> Sorry? I'm sure. Yeah, but. I'm assuming those are exceptions, right? Uh, what would be an example? I would, I would, okay. it'll, it'll work technically, you're right. I mean, if you have a software that will technically be able to do this, but the experience that the audience takes away is not only of a lip-synced dialogue, Absolutely. you know? The audience is taking away an emotion and a, a performance, a line, a dialogue, a certain connect that they make with the person. So like he rightfully said, you will not take away the same experience if you have an American. Yes, you're right. It might work technically. There are examples of success. Technically, it has worked. But it's not going to be translating as the same emotion because the person saying it is not going to be the person you relate that language with. And it's, you know, it's beyond language. The contexts are beyond language. People might accept locales, but they are not seeing their hometowns. So that is going to be different always. They wouldn't be paying Tom Hanks millions to play whatever he's doing in Toy Story. Exactly. There is something he's bringing to that character. Yeah, yeah. We could use exactly. It. But I don't know. Maybe it could be the future. We don't know. Yeah. Okay. Mirani, want to no, say something? No, I think we are summed up. Mostly. Okay. I'm sorry. It was a very nice. I had four questions left, but we are out of time. So thank you so much. You guys were wonderful. Thank you for being here. And thank you, audience. Thank you very much to our amazing panelists. And before I let you go, we've captured you in action on stage. And we'd like to give these to you as mementos. OK, here we go. Please, please come with me. That's you. Yes, that's very quick and swift. OK, sorry, I'm going to come back to you. That's you. Instant. See, that's how we create content here. Fast, super fast. OK, here you go. Sorry for keeping you waiting. And that's yours. Everybody, please come together. Let's take a quick group photograph. Let's capture this moment. <laughs> 